Happy Thursday. We Happy are Thursday. Full force into our season seven launch. And you've got your info real treat today. I'm going to introduce you to my my Finnish sister, my Finnish friend. So we're going to talk to Sue today just to kind of hear what her journey has been like and how she came to know about Amy Howard at Home and the Old World Finishing Course. So if you're watching this, welcome. Um, we are we are four days into our launch, and it is so exciting to see those of you that are going to be my new students. And I know that there are just questions that you have about what does that look like or how is it something that I'm going to be able to learn? Is it too difficult? Is it going to be over my head? Is it what all those things? Um, one, I, I just thought of this. One of those things that's fear. Fear is going to keep you from moving forward. And we have a um, we kind of have a sisterhood of not allowing fear to take us over. So, um, Sue, welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for taking your time today out of your busy day to be able to talk with me and to those that are watching. Thank you. It's a privilege. Thank you. So, Sue, tell everybody, what's the name of your business? It's changed because okay. of the classes that I've taken from you. Um, for Amy's business coaching is like taking a graduate class in business, only it's hands-on and applicable. It's relevant. So I had a cutesy name, uh, The Painted Lady. And it was when I was just painting plain old regular painting. And as I progressed and finished the old world finish class and then taken the inner uh, circle classes, and I'll continue with that, Amy has taught us that people want to know who is the artist because when you are progressing through her classes you are gaining more artistic talents um, i think amy said you say it's more for their toolbox but you're becoming a better artist um, and your repertoire of skills is growing tremendously so for the people that would be our audience or customers they want to know who's the artist my middle name is Lynn, so my business name is now Sue Lynn Finishes. And I had about six different changes, and then it hit me. This was the one that stuck because, Amy, you tell us about our finishes and have said the word enough. And it was like, I need to go and have Sue Lynn Finishes. And it makes sense because the finishes can be a noun or a verb. And it's Very, simple. I can remember it at 66. I can remember my own company name. I'm so glad. I'm so proud of you. Um, you. I will tell you, and I know this is kind of off topic, and, and I'm, I'm, I always have to remember to edit and focus, but I something that those of you that may be watching that you don't realize, we are a group of men and women that mm -hmm. love rescuing and restoring furniture. Mm -hmm. We love having beautiful homes. We love creating beautiful environments for our customers and clients to be able to have. But on top of that, there is this common thread that seems to um, join us in the fact of the things that we love. Yeah. That we, and I love, this, um, I love this explanation of a tribe. It's a tribe mm -hmm. of people that have common goals, that have common loves and we have forged these friendships that are, even though we, it's all been virtual, um, they're real and they're, they're meaningful and they're deep. And I think that's one of the benefits of our old world finishing yeah. course um, that we offer. And a lot of people may not realize that because one thing you go through the modules um, you'll have your homework, you'll do your live mentoring with me, but then you have your tribe of people that are there, the most positive, most loving, affirmative um, people. And that's, that's a great part of it because 
sometimes the stinking thinking in our brains and when we start questioning when we're actually painting or doing things we need somebody to kind of take our hand and go hey stop this looks great continue on with this so mm -hmm. um sue i'm curious and just to kind of let everybody know here um how did you originally get to know about amy howard at home I can't tell you what came first, the chicken or the egg, because they happened almost simultaneously. I saw something on Facebook because I was doing, you know, like looking at YouTube tutorials and they were all pretty much the same and I wasn't really learning anything. And there was a lot of jibber jabber and it's like, let's get to the point and teach. Um, so there was an ad that popped up. And I think it was when you were having your classes live in Memphis. It was pre-COVID, right before COVID hit. Okay. And about the same time, my best friend, who's an interior designer, gave me one of your books. And so it clicked. It was like, oh, this is the woman I saw. Same well, one. I didn't take the uh, the class when I saw it at first because I had just um, spent way too much money on some paints, another brand. We and it have. ended up practically giving them away because I had horrible results. So the way I, no, no, it's fine. It wasn't drawing. It was always tacky. So I was starting to get frustrated with the product because I was spending a lot of time. So everything kind of, it was almost like kismet. It happened almost simultaneously. So your ad came up again. I was now very aware and I had Googled and looked and read about you. And it was like, that's it. I'm taking her class. And it was because everyone was doing the same old. And, and you will hear Amy say it. A lot of people will, they're paint slappers. They slap on paint. It's latex that's on sale from a big box store. And then they might as well drag it behind the truck down the gravel uh, road because they're standing and it doesn't even look natural. So there, you've got the very primitive, um, it's not a finished look for a lover or a connoisseur of good furniture. Um, then you've got the same old, same old where they're doing maybe, you know, shading and blending, which we can do, you know, we can do those techniques. So I still see stuff, but I pretty much have focused. I have focused everything on Amy because everyone else is doing the same old thing. Blend it, slap on a transfer, call it good, a little bit of wax and, um, I think it's trendy. I think it's going to go away. I wanted to set myself apart from the paint slappers and the uh, transfer blenders. And I finally said, you know what? I'm worth it. I'm going to take this old world class. And it is the best investment. And I did mention it to Amy. I spent a lot of money on my master's. It's a better investment than I spent on my master's. It that is so changed my life. That is one of the kindest things anyone has it's ever honest. said. It's but, brutally honest. You know, I don't know. I don't know that people that are do redoing furniture or cabinetry or interiors or walls or art or right. whatever, they don't realize that when, the way we're doing it is that it can go in a lot of different directions. Yes. But they love doing, they love making things with their hands. Yes. That's one of the commonalities that we all have. We love creating something that is more beautiful, especially we love taking something and rescuing and restoring it. But that may transition into artwork. That may transition into floors or walls or whatever. Um, and it's important to understand why something is developed and to understand mm -hmm. the process and all of that that goes together. And I think you're right in the fact that so many times with trends um, and how they're birthed, they will, they will go through a cycle. Yeah. But if you do things in a very classic way yes. that has an art history base that's been around for thousands of years, it never goes out of style. It's, a, it's classicism to where you're training your eye and it's something that can fit and go into any room or transition into another house or whatever. And also your customer, the customer that you are developing finishes and painting furniture for is up here and they're willing to pay more money. Mm -hmm. um, 
so no, what a what an incredibly gracious, generous thing to say. That is so sweet. Thank you. So so all right. So my next question is as far as, and I think we answered this for everybody, but as far as what you painted before, it was, would, I, would we say kind of you were painting with acrylic or chalk based paints and, and waxing it and you wanted to be able to take your painting skills to the next level. Mm -hmm. So I, right. I did start with a chalk based paint and then I tried an acrylic resin paint and I had beautiful colors but i could not get them to adhere the way i wanted and dry the way i needed them to okay so now that you've done the oh, what season were you in the old world finishing course five. you five, you were five okay so now that you have completed it um the good thing about it is and those of you that may be watching you can you have that you have those mm -hmm. modules and you can you're in the mentoring forever in perpetuity mm -hmm. so you can pop in and pop out and do this at your own pace because right. life happens. But um, so now that you have taken the course, what would you say is something that you look at and go, I can't believe I did that. I mean, that really surprises me. Mm -hmm. I just finished two tables and I love them. They look like I found them in Europe. One of them is an antique round table and it's in off whites and barely gray. I'm not a huge gray fan, but I use the patina, the cracked patina. And then I use this, I call it the smackdown technique where you just put your fingers and pull or you move your whole fan. My name for it is the smackdown. Okay. Um, it looks spectacular. That is not a style my husband likes, but he goes through that is a beautiful table. Then um, I have been using and practicing this SmackDown, uh, you know, patina because I like where it's crackled, but then I like chunks out of it. Yes. As if it has a long, rough history, but it was still a love piece. Mm -hmm. And I see it as it came from a French beautiful apartment and then to their country home. And then maybe somebody tossed it around and it's got a story. Mm -hmm. Then I just took a... Um, Everything I do is solid wood, old wood, a uh, little nightstand, and I used a new color, and I just used a crackle, but I experimented. Some crackle heavier in spots, some lighter. It is the most outstanding finish I've done yet. It is it is just beautiful. So the crack patina I am the most comfortable with. Okay. What is... What's your next game of attack? I'm just curious, like as far as a finish, now that you feel like you've got the smack down. Oh, I've got the smack down. You got the down. smack down, down path. Well, what is your next, what's your, what's your next finish that you're going to tackle that you learned in the old world finishing course? It's tied. I um, have struggled. It, it's the simplest one. Well, I do want to mention, I do love your wax, the wax class where you had taught us to mix different waxes. Your custom waxes. Oh yeah. I don't have to buy other brands anymore. I can custom wax exactly what I want and I like mixing my colors. And so, um, and playing, it's like chemistry for fun instead of a, a grade. Um, my next finish, it's tied. I had trouble with milk paint, which is strange because everyone says it's the easiest. But um, Amy mentioned in our tribe, you stay in contact and you form friendships. And there's a uh, young man that did a gorgeous cherub. And it looks so much like a cherub, an antique cherub picture that um, my husband's daughter took. I asked him how he did it. And so um, he told me his technique. So I'm going to tr try Fabio's technique. With, uh, I was going to ask angel. if it was Fabio. He's, it's Fabio. And Italian. we got to chat. Yes. And he did a cherub that I just want to steal. I want to go to Pennsylvania and steal it from him. But um, I'm going to try his technique. And then because I'm in inner circle, I am going to try some more Venetian plaster. I did pretty good, but it wasn't per perfect. I'm a perfectionist. It doesn't come out of my uh, workspace unless it's perfect. And um, y'all, after you finish Old World, you've got to go and consider seriously Inner Circle because we're learning to make 
um, some products that I'm not going to go and spoil it. It's just really the humdiggity. It's wonderful. But I'm going to make the interior designer, um, that's my best friend, she's not going to see this. I'm going to make a custom antiqued mirror and mat it and frame it. We're learning how to do ma mirrors. I am going to ruin it. But we also have learned how to do wallpaper and fabrics. So I'm going to go and she's redoing her office and I'm going to do a, a mirror and I'm going to do a piece of fabric, mat it and frame it in her style as a gift. So I'm going to be doing the Venetian plaster and perfecting my technique. And then I'm going to do Fabio's milk pay technique. I love that. You know, here's the, the one thing that I'm proud of you and the fact that continuing to experiment. Yes. And I don't mean this as negative at all because I used to almost be offended by it, but we have to give ourselves the freedom to play yeah. and experiment because that's when we, in taking the skill level and being able to have that freedom to experiment and then develop new things that may become mm -hmm. your signature finishes or your signature art. Mm -hmm. So um, that's, but it has to start somewhere and there has to be some formal training, right. some formal processes in mm -hmm. place that you learn and then you build on them. And that's what the old world finishing course is. So Sue, Absolutely. To, to wrap this up, somebody watching this, that it may be, um, a man or a woman. It may be someone that has done a job for a long time and their heart mm -hmm. and their passion is to be creative and to paint and create. Um, would, there's a lot of things. I love to see all the different um, backgrounds. We've, we've had doctors, lawyers, mm -hmm. artists, um, homemakers, mamas, um, retired judges, reti I mean, uh, tons of people, pilot, retired mm -hmm. pilots, all these people, but they love their passion is creating. What would you tell them that would, that would give them a, kind of a word of encouragement? Do it. <laughs> you will not be wasting your time or funds by taking Amy's old world class, um, old world finished class. And then hopefully we'll see you in inner circle. Amy is has got years, dec you know, what, three decades of experience. She's formally trained in, um, in Europe. Her finishes are sought after by the very best. I mean, people that I can't think in numbers that high, but the techniques, and don't get me wrong, um, I follow Amy's techniques, but what I've seen is each of us as artists or designers or creatives has a unique spin on that technique. So Amy and I could be, and I am not, I am just an infant in this. I could work side by side. We're not gonna look alike because the pressure of your hand or or the, the way you use a certain brush and maybe Amy uses a brush she likes, I use the brush I like. But the technique is um, hundreds of years old. The products are natural. The products are healthy to be around. The Amy learned and is sharing what the old masters taught her. Once you get some principles down, you can start experimenting. And the reason I experiment, with Amy, is I make mistakes. And it's like, well, it's paint, so I can't get any worse. And I tweak things so that I don't have to strip it all the way down or sand it down. But those techniques are critical. You don't go into algebra without learning how to add and subtract. You don't do an old world finish or a high level finish without getting the basics. And the basics you're not gonna find on YouTube by, with anyone. There are some principles. You wanna take that, you wanna follow the products, follow the process, and then I swear, I've gotten rid of my other products. I, I pretty much gave them away. I love the products. I've had better adhesion, better performance. I've cut my cleaning and prep time down. But you go over that. And once you get those basics, and then the next level is learning 
how to apply the waxes, how to apply the paint, how to do that, how to mix your milk or paints. You will learn more than you ever thought. And it's a good investment for your artistic talents. What I didn't know is I was going to learn business techniques. It's something I had been looking for for years. It's something I was hungry for in my own professional career. I was looking for that mentor who would help me go to the next step. I didn't know it was going to be this woman, Amy. Um, I literally have benefited more than I did. And I had a solid master's degree. Um, it wasn't anything frivolous. I've learned more from old world finishes and the, what have we been, two months of inner circle mm -hmm. than I did in two years of my master's. Um, and it's practical, it's applicable, it's relevant. Mm -hmm. And I'm 66 and my husband keeps saying, why are you starting this now? It's because I want to. Because you enjoy I have, it. I, I enjoy it, but there's a fire. A fire was lit. So if you just have a creative mind, don't be afraid. It's only paint. You can always correct it. There's either learn how to camouflage it, sand it down or strip it down. And I've learned camouflage really well when I messed up and I still make a lot of messes except for the SmackDown. Um, do it. You'll build your courage. You'll grow your confidence. You're belonging to, it is the first group and we're mostly women, but it's the first group of men and women that actually want to help. They're not competing with you. <clears throat> In other business groups, I feel there's holding back of information because they're comp they view competition. Our group is not like that. We want you to succeed. We want you to um, experiment. We want you to feel comfortable. And we're all at different levels. It's it's the best investment I have ever made, and it's way cheaper than a college master's degree, and it's a lot more fun. Well, get the master's. Just get the master's. Don't even do your bachelor's. Oh, it's good to have a piece of paper, but learn something that you love. If you love what you do, you never will work a day in your life. That's right. That's right. We've always heard that, and mm -hmm. that's why I think a lot of people are using COVID and they're using opportunities like this to learn online to yeah. say, I'm doing this. So we welcome you to join our tribe and, and join season Please seven. Do. You'll see the link below and we look forward to yeah. meeting you. We will start our mentoring session a couple of weeks um, in a couple of weeks. It's it's, I don't know the exact date, but it's in November. Marty, Smarty Marty will put that on there. So you guys can see that. But Sue, thank you so much. You are such a delight. I have fallen so deeply um, in love with your passion and your love of life and your um, just how you explore, but you live and love so big. And that is just thank you. a testament to um, the kind of incredibly transparent um, and beautifully loving person that you are. So thank now you. Amy, you know, I don't wear makeup. You're going to get me to cry and then I'll look like a raccoon. Um, I just want to say, come on, join us. You will not regret at all. It is, folks, I am 66 and I've never met. I worked 45 years. I've never met a group of people like this who build. We want you to succeed. We want you to succeed artistically. We want you to make money. And we want you to have fun. So join us. I want to see new faces. <laughs> we will. Don't you? Yes, yeah. Yes, we will. It's going to be very exciting. Thank you, Sue. Have Thank a you fabulous so much. Day. Have a you fabulous too. day. Thanks, guys. Bye.